Hi, my name is Fiona Ross, and I'm a representative of the Sarcoma Cancer Foundation of Canada, where I serve on the board of directors. I was diagnosed with EHE in November of 2017. Um, my ac own academic background is English, drama, and education. Uh, so if there is any science wrong in my presentation, I take full responsibility. But I also have to say there's nothing like um, rare cancer advocacy to brush up on your high school science. So in Canada, we have had very little with EHE, um, although you will be astonished when I show you some of our numbers. Uh, and when I was diagnosed, I wanted to get something started here. So in 2022, we released uh, the, the news that's on that URL, and we started something called ProCare EHE. It is a project that is running, it will run four to five years. Its cost is a million dollars Canadian, which is you know a bargain for those of you in the UK and the US. It will run till 2026. Um, it has both clinical and research applications funded by us at the Sarcoma Cancer Foundation, but supported by the Princess Margaret Hospital Foundation as well. It's based in Toronto, um, which is Toronto if you're local or the six if you're cool like Drake. And it's, uh, it's at multiple locations across the city. Um, if you're ever in Toronto, uh, one of the cool things is there's Hospital Alley on University Avenue where there are four major international and national institutions right across the road from each other. And uh, one of the benefits to that is there is some real collaborative um, sharing of staff and resources. And the, the other cool thing is there's actually tunnels underneath University Avenue so that the people, patients can get from one hospital to the other without going above ground and without going through the traffic and our weather. And it's actually really cool. If you are in Princess Margaret, for example, they have 18 full radiation suites and they share one of them specifically with sick kids across the across the street. And you will see that the people that run that particular uh, radiation suite, they decorate it for Halloween, for Christmas, for every major holiday. And uh, they put some real effort into it. And it's very sweet and sad to behold these kids coming in and just their faces when they see the decorations. So the collaboration in these among these hospitals is really remarkable and we're very proud of that. Primary investigating physicians and professors are Dr. Christine Allen, Dr. Abba Gupta, and Dr. Albi Razak. Um, those of you in the Sarcoma community will of course be familiar with Drs. Gupta and Razak. Dr. Christine Allen, if you wanna look her up, a very impressive individual. I don't know if she's a PhD and an MD, but if you look her up, she is um, she is currently full tenured professor with the University of Toronto's pharmacy department, pharmacy faculty. But she also has extensive uh, extensive experience in the biotech and biomedical industries as an entrepreneur and investigator there. Um, and she has taken on our research project, which is actually a very exciting thing in her labs. So, more. I hate it when I go to PD as a teacher and they read you the slides. So I'm really going to try not to do that. What I'm going to try to do is have you read the slides because I am very confident that you're all literate. And um, and I'm going to try and contextualize the slides for you. So ProCare EHE, as I said, is both research and clinical. Prong one is our research. Prong two is our clinical um, or the, the, you know, the more practical clinical applications. And you can see there, there's very specific aims, and this is to be achieved over a four to five year process. So prong one is the, the data mining, and that's being done through CanSARC. And so I'm going to show you, this is actually the information they got specifically on UHN and Mount Sinai patients, uh, but they went through and data mined for across Canada, which is really cool because originally in the CanSARC database, they had 31 EHE patients but because it is fairly new and they would all be newer, um, newer diagnoses through um, UHN Mount Sinai. When they went through the data of 10 institutions across Canada, they actually found that we had 206 EHE patients across Canada historically and currently which is a massive increase of 568%. So it's that point where, you know, uh, sometimes people don't understand how data and uh, stuff like this impacts clinical understanding. When you find this number of patients through the data, it can really impact clinical practice. Uh, so that was exciting, I think. I mean, <laughs> in a weird way, right? So uh, we had 207 patients from 10 hospitals nationally, 
Um, we got down to 184 because 22 people had issues with consent or didn't return forms or whatever. Then another 58 were eliminated because the data wasn't considered clean and um, usable. So we came down to 126 nationally and 71 were at UHN. The 71 at UHN, that's the information I've got uh, across from you, uh, up on the slide right now. Um, and none of this is very surprising, I think, to us, more women than men, although not that much more. Uh, common treatments, we all know that these are kind of our first two go-tos. And the, the bottom two are the pieces of positive information that I like to think of. 50% uh, of patients didn't receive any treatment, just scanning and followed watch and wait. And 80% of us are alive at the five-year mark, which is nice to be in that 80%. In the second prong of the EHE project is the more clinical where they were talking about uh, getting a PDX model and then also understanding um, a, a, a thermosensitive liposome coding specifically for mechanist and serolimus uh, to see if that um, thermosensitive coding actually helps the, um, the functionality and efficacy of the drug. So this is from Dr. Christine Allen's own uh, summary report in January of 2024. She, the, she presented this to Dr. Skupta and Razak. Um, and you can see that things are well in hand and well in progress. Um, things are going very smoothly there. Uh, Dr. Razak very kindly sent me a whole um, PowerPoint on this particular project uh, and I, I didn't want to take it and forward it to you. And I didn't, my own science is, um, it's st stronger than the average person, but it's certainly not a doctor. And so I didn't want to misrepresent it. Uh, it was a really amazing PowerPoint. Uh, and with, and it was not just uh, in terms of the science, but it was actually beautifully packaged. Uh, and I talk, talked to to Gupta this morning, and she's like, "Yeah, that's some pretty high science." I was I really had to pay attention to follow all of it. So at least I know it's not just me, but it is happening. It's here. It's on progress, and we are going to have, I hope, some very interesting um, resorts resources to share with you in a year or two. So the other thing. Uh, fundraising, of course, uh, we know that. Uh, well, science isn't cheap, and good science is really not cheap, especially when we're doing stuff that's brand new or stuff that uh, hasn't been done before. So most of the funds for this project are already secured. Uh, we are absolutely committed to it. We do have another $200,000 of fundraising goals that we wish to reach. Um, again, it's it's a bargain for those of you in the UK and the US, if you ever want to you know, feel like you're making a difference. Uh, we do not have our own EHE foundation for a number of reasons, uh, but we worked through the Sarcoma Cancer Foundation who already had a lot of these, uh, this network and these um, relationships already set up. And so they've been a huge help. If you want to donate via them, I've included that information. Uh, the thing is because they represent all sarcomas, you do need to put EHE, my name, Fiona Ross, or Michelle Hughes to make sure it goes specifically to our EHE project and not into general revenue. And that's the one kind of caveat that makes it sometimes a little a uh, little less of a simple and uh, and smooth process. If you have questions, you can always email me at fightehecanada at gmail.com and the Sarcoma Cancer Foundation would be happy to support as well. And Jessica is their admin and I've included her email. So, and the last thing is a thank you. It was November of 2017 was when I was diagnosed. It was dark, rainy, and cold, and it was heading into a Canadian winter, which, as we all know by reputation, isn't the best and brightest and funnest and warmest place to be. Uh, so literally and figuratively, I felt completely alone. And it was a very, very scary place to be. So I had a pity party, and then I developed two goals. And one was that no Canadian would ever feel as alone as I did in those moments and those months. And the other was that Canada start EHG specific research. And I am happy to say in April of 2024, I'm still here. I'm one of that 80%, but I am no longer alone. And so there is a huge thank you owed to everybody on this list. And some of them are institutions and some of them are individual people because 
you have made this journey better, easier. Uh, it's a community and it's collaboration and you all have my deepest thanks. Thank you.